how's it going? What's the crack? You're all very welcome to uh, Ramble Pod 32 for Tuesday, the f- f- 9th of the 1st, 2018. Ha! Ha! We're back. Back at the pad. We're back at the pad, lads. We're back at the fucking pad. No more madness. Well, my brain has started to recoup already. Honest to God, back to just cooking regular... I mean, the grub was all right throughout the Christmas season, but just my brain has started to already regrow. I'm starting to fucking just, you know, do normal shit. Like fucking went shopping today for clothes. Well, not for fucking clothes. Picked up some socks, in fairness, you know yourself. But, like, just the brain is back. I, I can't guarantee this will be the most intelligent podcast you're ever going to hear in your entire life. But you know what? Do you know what? It'll be all right. It'll be all right. You, you, everybody back to work. Are you? You all right? Some some poor bastards, oh, in fairness, like myself, a lot of poor bastards over the Christmas working through, you know, if you're in retail or if you're got to be getting fucking turkeys choked or whatever you got to be doing. <laughs> what have you have to be doing? You know? Yeah, a lot of people had to be working, but some people, this is the first couple of days back, back yesterday, back possibly today for some people. Ah, uh, Jesus, lads. Jesus, do you know what? There'll be times you'll be going, uh, is it is it worth coming off to work at all, is it? Huh? Would it be as well to work straight through? Well, what do you reckon? Would you take it as an option if they were paying you no yeah, like no holidays? Would say, all right, to give you Christmas Day off. And cr- say, would you work would you work the panto hours of your job? Do you know what I mean? Would you would you do the the same days like, you know, take you get Christmas Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off. And that's it. You get one day off then on the second. That's it. But say they wanted to pay you, what, what would it take? Would it take triple pay, double pay, to work through it? Do you know what I mean? Given the fucking dose you're facing right now, like you're fucking skinned, do you know? You're paying your fucking stones, you're after putting on a fucking, an actual stone. Do you know? Has anybody done that? Does anybody keep it cute? Anybody keep it smart? Just go, you know what, I won't fucking hit it too hard. I won't fucking hit it too hard over the Christmas. Did you? Or is it fucking turkey sandwiches now for the next three weeks? <laughs> well, if you fucking are, I, I, I'm delighted for you. I hope you went fucking hard as fuck at it. There's no point in half hitting it. Sure there's not. Do you know what I mean? A bird never flew on one wing, as a man would say. I hope you fucking went hard. I, excuse me now, I'm still a small bit fucking coffee and spluttery. And I'm nearly over this man flu, lads. I just touch and go there for a while, I'd say. I was, uh, I was, uh, I was getting measured for a coffin and everything at one stage. I was fucking on death's door. But I, I soldiered through. Like the warrior that I am. I know. I know. You're probably all aghast at the minute going, what a legend. But uh, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I don't know what they, what they put in them fucking Benelin. Is it Benelin? The Oaks. They have a blue one for the night time. Um, fucking knock you out like a bastard. They're good jokes. They'll fucking get you through. I don't know if they're doing anything or they're just masking and just letting the body kind of... Cause you, they make you drink water to bait the fucking band. My lips were looking like Gandhi's fucking, the bottom of Gandhi's feet there for about, they still are. Just crep paper my fucking lips had turned into. But they're fucking good jokes, I tell you, they get they get you, get the job done. You'll sweat bullets on them when you have to do a bit of work like, like lipping around on a stage in front of fucking eight or nine hundred lunatics, so. But they they do, they get you through it. I'm still coughing a small bit, but you look at, that won't fucking, that won't hold me back. We'll be all right. I, um, did you do any resolutions? I haven't asked anybody about revolution or resol- revolutions. Did you turn around? Essentially, if I asked you if you did a revolution, did you turn around? How many times did you turn around? Um, did <laughs> what the fuck? I'm recording this late at night, lad. So I won't. I, and I told you the brain wouldn't be fully back to repaired yet. I wouldn't be repaired, and it won't be probably. I'd say for another two weeks. In all honesty, I won't be because we're. St- I'm. I've upped my tits and work already, but it's good. You can't compl- I can't complain. We'll find an old spot sometime in, in the summer to lie down for a bit. But look at fucking go hard at it. Go hard. Um the the where the fuck was I? Oh yeah. Re- revolu- uh, resolu- <laughs> I can't even fucking my New Year's resolution is to learn to be able to say resolution. Um I haven't. I haven't made any. I dunno. Has has anybody made any? People do make them like I mean I, you know what? I like there's fuckers all, like, there's all sorts of crowds just flogging shit on the basis. Like, you can see it when you see the ads on the, I'll tell you, there's fuckers selling all sorts of shit on the basis of it. Like, you know, you see the ads for Nicorette fucking things, they go wildfire all over it. Like, new year, new me, now that's it, hashtag fucking living my best life and all that shit. 
just pull the trigger on something. Don't be fucking, don't be making resolutions on things. Just fucking pull the trigger on the thing. If you want to get it done, get it fucking done. Don't be fucking looking at it. That's the, that's the bottom line. I'm, uh, I'm still, I've been using it less and less, but I'm, I'm getting rid of this. I'm, uh, I stopped the fags a couple of years back, but I still smoke the odd old fucking yolk without this fucking, I'm just looking at it now and it's even making me take looking at it, the fucking vapey yolk. That's a goner. That's a gosh, that fucking thing. It's for the fucking, it's for the scrap heap, that joke. Uh, and that's the way, they, don't be fucking, don't be talking about it. Just fucking pull the trigger. Suffer on a fucking bit for a while and you'll be grand. I, I don't know what you'll be doing in the way, like, what do people typically do? I suppose go back to the gym. Go to the gym for the first time ever. I don't know. I haven't fucking time for the gym. I haven't fucking time for the gym. Just, I suppose, don't eat like a total bollocks like and fucking get up off your arse when you have to be getting up off your arse. And you might be all right some bit. I mean, I, no, this is... Jesus Christ, Dr. Tom here telling you what to be doing. Like, but if if you don't have the time for the fucking gym, I suppose stay active and don't be horse, is, horsing into the pines. Too bad. Um, anybody go dry... Anybody chance in the dry January? Anybody? Because from the moment, my sounds of it, I don't... Odd people I know, like, obviously went fucking bananas over the Christmas and they were drinking fucking night and day. But I don't know if people are doing that anymore. I don't get the vibe that people are going fucking full bore. Because I think people are kind of getting sick of... They get, you get, you're getting sick of fucking the same old shite every evening. Like, you know what I mean? And there's not, like, the over Christmas. Pubs are going to be full of cunts. Full of cunts. You know what I mean? Like, they're just going to be stepping on your toes who don't know how to go drinking. Do you know what I mean? Like, they, you know, it's like, it's like they're, they're st- by the time you're hitting your 30s and stuff like that, or even good people in their 20s know how to go drink, you go drinking like a fucking, like a grown up. You go and you enjoy your fucking pints or your whatever you're drinking. And you, you drink like a fucking grown ass adult. And you have the crack and you don't be fucking on the phone. That's what you fucking don't be doing. Don't be fucking the four of you sitting around looking at, four of you sitting on a fucking table and all of you on the fucking phone. That's not going drinking. Stop at home, you can't. And just drink a couple of cans by yourself. That's what you're going to do. Don't be going fucking socialising to look on your fucking phone. We The one night we got out, two nights we went out over the uh, the panto thing. And one of the night, one was the full cast and then it was just a couple of the buys. We all share, shared kind of a dressing room with a lot of scenes together and stuff. Um, all the lads who were on pretty much the, pod, uh, the podcast. We went to this old smelly man pub. It was fucking beautiful. No, I spotted one flip phone, I think, inside the place. They, like there was a couple of women in there all right but they were the sound sort of women there was no roaring and shouting out of fucking the blokes there was no roaring and shouting and it was a- everybody from every age inside there people just being sound there was a couple playing it in the corner fucking class musicians but keeping it nice and fucking low they weren't trying to blow the heads off people they were just class and at one or two point one or two of the lads went to take out the phone I said what the fuck are you doing with the phones and in fairness it was just to fucking to make sure like that there was a key left out or something that's all but I was probably getting a bit ratty you know the kind of way I was going I was probably mother hen in the situation, but I made it a policy. We we're going into this place, we we're going in drinking pints. I would have fucking looking at the phones for at least three hours. How's that? And do you know what? It was fucking glorious. The fuck? Oh, Jesus Christ. This place, it was sort of old man's pub that says, still says well, it sells wellies and yard brushes and a box of rack poison and a bag of nails if you need it. Do you know that kind of a fucking place? We were inside in the snug. Over comes the owner. He says, How are the boys? He says, Jules, you're from the Pento, yeah? And I says, Yes, we are, yeah. Fucking mighty, mighty. Over he goes, will you eat a pizza? Huh, what? What is that you said, good sir? Will you eat a pizza? Over he fucking comes with a pizza, right? Lashes it down in front of him. I'm not joking. It can't have been 12 minutes later. Another fucking pizza. We'll give it another 20 minutes later. A fucking another pizza came down. And at least, at maximum, another 20, 25 minutes. Four fucking pizzas came down to us. Should I buy we should man knew full well they were pure salty pizzas, they were fucking delicious. I don't know how delicious they actually were in the cold light of day, but when you have about four or five creamy pints drank and somebody throws a fucking pizza at you, it could have fucking gravel and dog shit up on top of it, but so long as it has cheese and, and fucking salt and is on a base of some sort of crustiness, you'd fucking eat your fingers for the stuff. Oh my good Jesus. And it, it just it it was just it was revelations. As even Davy, like Davy Crowley, who'd be, like, who wouldn't be used to this scenario. So he was just, you've never seen a man just love and appreciate the moment. Like, he was like, this might be the greatest pub on, on the history of pubs. And I'm like, yeah, this is exactly why I wanted to come here. I'd heard, I'd been there years and years ago when I was in college, and I'd heard tell that it was still as class as it always was. No fuck acting, no telly, no nothing. Just pints and good crack. And it was fucking glorious. 
glorious. The other evening went out all right, but it was full cast, you know yourself. It was um went to like a fancy Italian restaurant. And you know what? I tell you one thing, it's true for Colin Geddes. He said it and I I've, I've always kind of thought it, but you know, I never I never went to Italian restaurants. I just it, it never dawned on me to go to one because why would I do that when like Unless it's a weapon of a place, I can't fathom because I can make fairly decent Italian food myself, you know, from the ground up, like, you know, like, and it's, it's kind of like, well, yeah, do you know, like, I know it's not slagging off in the Italian restaurant, but at the same time, it's like, there, lad, unless you're making all that pasta over there by pure fucking hand, I can't see what I, what I can't do better than that, you know, and we went to an Italian restaurant and exactly that. Get us said it himself. He goes, so why would you be paying for the fucking stuff? And you can't, it's hard to justify it. Like, like you're talking, like, I, I tell you what, I got the pizza, right? And the pizza your man landed out to us for free. Now, oh, okay, it was free and everything tastes nicer when it's for fucking free. But honest to God, his might have been fucking frozen fucking pizzas out of Iceland. I don't know. But they were fucking hell of a light sight, sight better than the yolk I got anyway. I was sick as a fucking dog after it. I, I actually drove home that night. I wasn't going drinking, but... um. It sat in my fucking, like a pizza, that sat in my fucking guts like a fucking knob of concrete. It's like, what are you fucking, you robbing bastards. You fucking, you, do you know what? Fucking bluffing, fucking half year, I'm telling you now. Fucking bluffing bastards. I've Now, since saying that, I've been told by a few people that there are a couple of fucking incredible fucking Italian places around the place. Well, I want to go to them. I want to see what this incredible fucking, because we were, I don't know what I was telling you, but I was three days in Milan. And I can get a be- decent fucking bite in the whole fucking place. Venice, the very fucking same. Cunt of a place for grub. Smashing to look at and all the rest of it. I love saying that Milan was a cunt of a place because, of course, we landed on, during our little Italian trip, we landed on their fucking mid-Christ, what was it, mid-fucking fashion week. Oh, oh, the level of cunt. Oh, the le- the le- there was cunt just dripping off the fucking walls. Just bastards everywhere. People who shouldn't exist in reality. Or at the very least, we shouldn't coexist in the same fucking city. Uh, fucking continent. The likes of my head walking around with these fucking wank bags. Do you know what I mean? You're going, would you ever fuck off at yourself? Um, but there wasn't a decent bit of grub to be gotten in the whole place. The one restaurant that... Or, uh, two or three d- different crowds had blowholed about this restaurant. And we finally went to it. And it was, I remember it was my birthday. And in fairness, your man made... He was kind of... I think he took pride in the fact that he was being an ignorant bollocks and he was going to tell you what you were going to drink and all the rest of us all right now listen here to me my good man you're going to learn fairly quickly i'm going to walk the fuck back out the door if that's what you're planning on if that's you're going to tell me but anyway we can't struck a deal i told him what he was going to fucking bring me because i was willing to pay for the fucking food unless he was going to give it to me for nothing but landed on and he made a he was all right with the fucking made it herself said it's my birthday brought out a cake and all the rest that was grand but this unbelievable, appar- apparently fucking unbelievable, fucking traditional, amazing fucking Italian restaurant. I wouldn't wipe my arse with the fucking stuff in comparison to what I'd make myself at home. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm going, lads, I don't know where you're getting your stuff, but this isn't fucking good gear. It's not fucking good gear. And fucking Venice was fucking pure shite altogether. Now, they do say that there's almost no Venetians left in Venice. It's just full of, like, Chinese fucking crowds just... Bring it again, cash and carry grub in and just fucking flogging. Couldn't get a decent bite of grub anywhere in that fucking place. Ice cream. That's about the only thing that came good out about Milan and ice cream. There wasn't bad grub now down in, what was it, Sardinia, but sure, they don't even consider themselves Italians. So if anybody knows of an absolute top fucking shelf Italian fucking restaurant where a, a fella can go and get a bite, bite to eat, then send me on to it. And now apparently there's a place on the keys in, in Dublin that it only seats about 12 people. It's supposed to be just outrageous. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just a bollocks. That could be the thing too. I might actually just be a total bollocks. Ah, oh, jeez. Anyway, I think we were starting about resolutions there. But sure, look at lads. If you have, tell me your resolutions. To fucking send them on to me. I want to know your resolutions. Fair play too to the couple of new patrons. We have uh, Matt and who the fuck else have we on this fucking week? Oh, the bowl fucking, bowl, bowl chain from on hand. Fair play to you, bat. He jumped on fucking board. And of course, everybody on the Patreons, you are going to get your, your beaks wetted by uh, an episode of the, the, the Tom and Jerry show, which you will have seen the Christmas version a couple of episodes back on the regular one, but you'll only have access to it on the Patreon if you are a Patreon subscriber. 
also you'll get an ad free version of this one if it adds if the fucking ads are a pain in the hole go over there throw it a couple of dollars once a month and you'll get all the episodes for ad free for that and also you'll get the back catalog of the Tom and Jerry show and as soon as I stop with them which is going to be about another couple of episodes time uh, there is it's probably about another six episodes I think six or seven episodes um when I stop with them I will be doing an extra ramble pod purely for Patreons yeah 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 extra one a lot more cursing a uh, lot more in depth <laughs> <laughs> I'll be actually answering direct questions and we will there will be a case that I will set up a live podcast to directly to the Patreons if people want to jump on board with that in the way of YouTube if you have a YouTube channel there's a way I'm about to find another way lads to the Patreons to, uh, to the gang of Patreons that are there there is a way of actually linking direct to you where nobody else can jump on board and we can just all have a big old fucking natter and I can just basically curse and swear at you and you can curse and swear back at me happy fucking days um, and, oh yeah the Tea Republic stuff, my stuff has, yeah, my stuff has arrived, but of course it went to Herself's mother's house. Uh, I'm after, uh, Herself got me a present of a Buckshot mug. I can't wait to have a look at it. So have a look, the, all the link, if this is your first time hearing it, have a gander at the Tea Republic shop. There's a couple of new ones went up there from uh, past comedy projects. They look cool on a t-shirt and things like that. I've had them on t-shirts and stuff myself down the line. It all goes towards the old podcast in the end. Really Patreon is you know, work, actually worked a while of actually setting up the Tea Republic shop. Not so much. Not so much. But sure, look at whatever way you want to contribute to the podcast. It'd be great. You may hear that the sexy t- tones of my voice have probably even gotten, or just the, the vile sounding fucking coldy nose on me is even better sounding. But this is a new microphone that, uh, yeah, it's the first stage in, uh, first stage, just got a shot of payment from the Patreons and you bought a brand new mic. So the Patreons are to be thanked for this sexy fucking better sound that's coming into your ears right now. Uh, I'm going to get another two mics in the coming weeks um, directly as a result of the Patreons. That's the policy. I, I'm trying not to dip into my own. Obviously, you have to dip into your own pocket, for fuck's sake. But if I can purely make it produced, and that makes the Patreons the actual direct produce, producers of the show then, which is cool as shit when you think about it, isn't it? You don't actually have to go cap in hand to like, you know, radio fucking channels or whatever. You just go, here, sound lads. Um, oh my fucking Jesus. I had, I, I finally get into kind of some of the presents. I never, re- I, like over the Christmas, uh, I didn't, you know, the, the extended family presents and stuff like that. I got the usual of fucking cool stuff and that just fucking, I don't want for presents much, but... You know, usual old shower gel packs and of Ted Baker and a couple of nice things have shown up, a few old aftershaves and things like that. But um, an interesting one showed up. I think it's from my brother in law. Uh, uh, fuck. I I even I even fucking found myself Instagramming today about it while I was still mid flight and almost dying. It looks cool as shit, right? It's it's a uh, it was just a pack of you know when he's kind of I suppose. They go together kind of, I'd call called the ghost chili pack, right? And what it is, it was just one of those cool little kind of mason jars, or what did they call them? Those jars with the flip top lids, uh, full of um, crackling, pork crackling kind of things. I, thought, I fucking love pork crackling. But there was a bottle of hot sauce came with it, right? And I was thinking, oh, sure, I'll try that at a later stage, the hot sauce stuff, right? Um, I didn't realise that the hot sauce was in the fucking crackling as well. So, of course, I hoofed two or three of them into my fucking mountain. I'm like, fuck, I love this crackling stuff. Then all of a fucking sudden, as it smashed the dust in my mouth from me smashing it away, it shot down straight into my lungs, of course. I started coughing, which took it all straight out of my mouth. So the heat wasn't in my mouth at all anymore. The ghost chili dust, as a result of the crackling, just went straight into my lungs from me coughing. I genuinely, I, I, no, I don't, I don't suffer too badly from the old heat stuff, like. But a ghost chili is a fucking ghost chili, lad. And I'm telling you, I, the powder of it got... I, that was a weird thing. I couldn't even cool it down by drinking water because it was in my lungs. So I just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not even fucking... I should... I, I fuck it, I can laugh at myself. But you want to see the cut of me for a good 20 fucking minutes hacking like a fucking cat trying to get a hairball out of his fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for the love of fuck! I was in some con- condition after it. Uh, some yolk, some yolks. I mean, I'm fucking my eyes are watering now at the idea of it. Fuck! 
fucking hell I will like I'll be able to try the sauce at a proper stage I'll put it in with a drop of something else like but this shit Jesus Christ I'm, I'm guessing they're just supposed to burn your mouth I'm guessing it isn't supposed to turn to like fiberglass sorry you yawning turn to like fiberglass glass dust and shoot down into your fucking lungs and burn you from the inside out I'm guessing that's the poly- that's that's what they're meant to do or not meant to do I'm guessing they're just supposed to be a bit hot in the old mouth there like but for oh, fuck me it was you You couldn't have designed it to go fucking worse do you know what I mean than it actually did but I, I'm, I'm thankful I'm thankful um, I'll give it a go when I'm fucking the cough has kind of gone a bit because whatever it did just set off a cough in the fucking mouth and it was like oh, oh, oh and next thing inhaled all the dust down into the oh for the love of fuck I'll give the old chilli I'll, I'll give the chilli sauce a go on on something to do with barbecuing yeah in the next week or two now, the barbecue is going to get started. Um, I'm going to just trying to get out fucking hunting this Sunday if I can. But um, we'll see what way things pan out. The fucking I sh- I could have given myself an extra week or two of break, but when work comes in, lads, and you're you're doing this game that I do, you take what you can fucking get, and you take it fucking you take lots of it as much as you fucking can, because it's just a way of it. Thankfully, thankfully, these in the last last year or two things are good. But Jesus, you know what I mean. When you work work for yourself in a game where you're you're purely selling the service of humor and acting, that's it. That's all you're selling. It's uh, yeah. You take what you you take the work when it's going. So uh, thankfully the work is going good. But I could do with a fucking. I had a bit of a lie in this morning actually. And my fucking uh, my old man knees and everything just started giving out. It's like nah, that's you done with the panto now for a while. So we're just gonna kick you straight up the hole because you've been lepping around like a fucking lunatic for the last. Five weeks essentially, so yeah, I've uh, but it's back back to reality tomorrow, and I hope the body just goes. Okay, sorry, 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 I was getting carried away myself there. I wanted your fucking knees to just give out, but I I I tried to start catching up on uh, as we were winding down. I caught up on the day the day off on the two the the we, the fucking whole cast were going on about this fucking bird box thing, right? And I refuse to even do parody jokey fucking things about it. Like, because a couple of lads I know have done it. Like, and, uh, and I can tell you straight out the fucking gate. I don't even think it deserves any fucking parody dicking about. I see Shane and fucking Colin doing it. It's like, yeah. The lads, in fairness, were right on it. You know, I didn't watch it, on, it probably in time. But I don't think that film was so shite that I don't think it even fucking deserves doing a joke about it. Like, holy fuck. The Robin Bastards lifted everything from every kind of a pathogen fucking uh, zombie apocalypse fucking alien landing apocalyptic world. Uh, you know, the others kind of a thing. They they just lifted everything and then gave no backstory, no fucking reason. Like, if that script, I'm telling you here now, if that script was written by nobody in particular, Handed to a production company. They'd read it through it and go... Oh, and they hadn't mentioned nothing about the money from Netflix. They mentioned nothing about putting Sandra Bullock on it. They just read it through. they go, lads, you're missing about 40 pages off this script. The first 15 minutes, anyway, at the very end. Or at the very beginning. Where, where, where's this... Where's this... Where's this fucking... Where's this fucking virus slash demon coming from? And how is it... Mo- where's her backstory? What? Where's her backstory? What the fuck? What the fuck, lads? There's a bit missing the fuck a bit. Ah, lads, you've closed this out too quickly as well. Have you all... Have you, did you fuck off to lunch or something and finish this up? There's at least 15 minutes missing off both ends of the movie and there's about another 10 minutes missing in the middle. I'm telling you now. And I, like things like... like and When I watched that fucking... I lost all faith in that shit I'd lost because that was one of the first kind of... Oh, Jesus, kind of a big... You know, when that big fat fucker didn't lose a fucking pound... Right, that bothered me because it's like lads there, because even on the shittiest TV show you'll be doing, right? They have people doing uh, continuity. They'll have an iPad picture of you from the morning, from the start of the f- of the scene you're shooting. They'll have an iPad picture when you're done with hair and makeup and the fucking the way the costume is set. Whether it's a, a short open down three buttons, by fuck it has to stay that way. If your watch is on your left arm, it has to fucking stay that way. It just turned in, turned out because they that's continuity. Fag, if you're smoking a fag halfway down the scene, that fag will have to be burnt halfway down if caught caught his call and then start again on that. It's just though that's the job of certain people, right? And that's on the smallest that's on handy all fucking shows you be doing. So when I see a big fat fuck like him not losing a fucking pound, 
over two or three seasons living on a fucking owl island away and f- so when I saw your one's I suppose new boyfriend was he got was he Tom was his name the black lad the big gorgeous bastard built like a fucking Greek god okay now he was saying he worked in the buildings or construction at the beginning yeah you know you don't get triceps like that in the fucking buildings anyway because not without a, having a big fucking belly up the front fair enough I let you off at that time. But don't give me no. Don't be giving me that shit. That five years down the line, when the children are fully grown, you are still ripped within an inch of your fucking life. To smithereens, the fucker is. And you're like, yeah, I get it. You might, you might shed a few fuck, a bit of body fat, no doubt. But there is no fucking way you're keeping the muscle mass on, Tom. Not a fucking hope. Not a hope. And I know I'm getting sound like I'm getting pedantic, but at the same time, lads, if this shit wants to be taken fucking seriously, they're going to put millions. How much do they pay fucking Sandra Bullock to do it? I know she hasn't done a fucking tap in a while, but at the same time, she's not coming in at no soft fucking money. She would have been five million handy for that. Five million handy. And that would have been a fast shoot. I bet you any money that was a fucking fast shoot for her. Guarantee you she was five million. Easy. All day long. If not fucking seven or eight million for that. Because she knows Netflix has the money. Fast film. She didn't have to do a whole lot for it, now in fairness, like. Fell into the river at one stage. No biggie. Wearing a blindfold for half a grand. Do you know what I mean? Um... That, I guarantee it. That's where all the big money went. But and they were missing things like it. The size of your man just was ridiculous. That, and that just fucking bothered me. But that wasn't what re. You know what I mean? I couldn't left it all off. But it was a poor. Like has anybody seen the Quiet Place? A Quiet Place. It came out just a fucking year ago, and these fuckers totally lifted. They lifted everything about it, and they didn't even try. Like there was. Do you know what I mean? At least there was. There was something where these in the quiet place where they could actually battle the things that were fucking at them but there was a backstory to where they came nah 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 nothing at all watch a quiet place if you think the bird box was class watch a quiet place and try and wipe the bird box away from your memory if you can or at least wipe the fact that Netflix put so much money into it into the advertising of it Sandra Bullock's in it and that's about it and just people were just raving about it I did I, I, I saw it, yeah, it would have been tense had they come up with that idea. But the fact that so many other movies had done it, like, sneaking through the road, you know what I mean? Mad Max, fucking the first one, the Road Warrior. That does tense things, having to go across the countryside in tense moments. Do you know what I mean? Is there another, like, how many, like, what was the fucking, the one uh, with your man Clive Owen, where they had to sneak the child across uh, in, a, in an apocalypse, that was, your one was after getting pregnant, like that was the same thing, you know what I mean, sneaking them across, is there really a utopia at the other end of the thing, F- like, you rotten fuckers, you lifted everything from other fucking movies, and then packaged it together, and put Sandra Bullock on it, got Kim Kardashian to fucking tweet about it, and all of a sudden people going, oh my god, it was like super duper tense, You're like no no, you're allowing yourself to be swallowed up by fucking marketing. I'm telling you now, that's a shit movie. Call it a spade a spade, that's a shit movie. Shit because it robbed everything off everybody else. It's not a bad movie had it not fucking robbed everything. Do you get me? But that, none of that stuff is original or even close to it. And they get left off loads of bits of the fucking script. That down, fucking... And I was annoyed with the fucking new Black Mirror. I was fucking annoyed with it. Because Black Mirror is supposed to warp your brain. It's supposed to warp it. This seemed like good crack the whole way through it, just choosing bits. And then it got a bit fucking, I do fucking choose my arse. Because it was all going to end one way. I think if they wanted to warp somebody, fucking kill the whole lot of them. Do you know what I mean? The whole fucking thing. And you know, it uh, It was a great idea. I will give him that. I'll give Charlie Brooker that. It was a fucking great idea. In It was like those games from years ago where you could choose a certain path, end up a certain way, you know. And it, was all the, and it started off with books that worked into video games. But I don't know. I I know some people got a bit nerdy and a bit thick about it, like. But I, 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 it just didn't warp my brain the same like, the same way so many of them have. They bent my fucking brain, and that's kind of what I'm expecting from Black Mirror, which is a lot to be fucking asking. Like, I mean, you know, to be, I'm not saying my brain is, but it warps everybody's brain. If you haven't seen Black Mirror, start watching it now. But I tell you here now, create some space in your life. Because it's a fucking TV show that'll fucking take over your brain and life. Not like Game of Thrones takes it over, or fucking whatever else they... Or Orange is the New Black. I mean, it'll take shit over in your brain. I'm still not right after the very first one with the Prime Minister and the Pig situation. I'm still not right after that. Still to this day, I can't think about that for... Not that I'm annoyed at Charlie Brooker for putting such a fucking terrible terrible thing on the oak. 
It's just that it dug into my brain so badly. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus. Um, so that's, yeah, had a bit of a... Jesus Christ, lads, we got a bit of a rant and everything in there, the whole lot. I didn't mean, mean, mean to give out too much about things. Um, but I did. I fucking did. Thank you very much, anyway, for fucking listening. We're almost back on track, brain-wise, lads. As you can see, there's some sort of normality coming back to it. It isn't just a pure waffle that I've been going on with other weeks. We're getting back there. We'll get back to where we're supposed to be as soon as my brain starts reattaching itself again. Um... Of course, thank you very much to the Patreons. Thank you very much. If this is your first time listening, do hit subscribe. Gigs coming up uh, next week. I will be proper, proper couple of corporates, but look at comedy club gigs. I will be headlining Cherry Comedy Club next Monday. A, a big tasty one is coming this month. We'll be back down at the UCH. I'll be there in University Concert Hall Limerick. I'll be there with um, Dave McSavage and John Caleary. That's going to be a fucking tidy gig. Um... There are other gigs there, and I know there's a couple from Cork. Like I'm back in City Limits, I'm back in the Laughter Lounge. I need to tell you all about them, but I need to put them up on my website and everything first. Um, as soon as I get that shit together, because you know yourself, if you're way way out of your house for three fucking weeks, there's a ton, a ton of shit to be fucking done. Got to call a plumber and every fucking thing. But look at hey, 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 we won't fucking stress about that. Let you fucking digest what it, some of the stuff I've just said. If it's your first time listening, hey, hey, hit subscribe. The Ramble Pod is out every week. So is the Bookshot fucking edition, which just comes out on a Friday with a guest. Um, also, you can jump over to Patreon if you want to go ahead and listen to some episodes of the Tom and Jerry Show. If you want to follow me on any platforms, go ahead. It's Tom O'Mahony Comedy. We'll find it on uh, Instagram, t- Twitter, and Facebook. Chatty Snaps, Tom Bear O'Mahony. Uh, if you want to send me out in long form, and yes, I have a list. I have actually, that's one of the things today on the post-its. The, pe- the lads to be gotten back to um, Thursday is my day. I'll be able to sit down and actually do some writing. Um, you'll be gotten back to the people who wrote, wrote me in long form emails. If you do, go to buckshotpodcast at gmail.com or just go straight through the website to the contact page. It'll find me. Shoot me off a long form email if you want to. Don't forget to hit a uh, rate and review on this. You'll give it a tasty rate and give it a taste review. Love to hear the fucking chat back. If you want to hit me on anything, I'm normally on Instagram. If you want to hit me a message, shoot me on over some. Hit me a screenshot as to where you're listening to it. If, if you're suffering back at work, and this is fucking somewhat buying you some time of, of normality. Or stupidity, one or the other. Hit me in on a screenshot and let me know what's going on. And I'll be back to you again on Friday again. <laughs>